So in the in the end of eighties, I was about twenty years old. I'm born in 1967, and I lived normal life, normal young boy's life in, in Scandinavia, in Hel Helsinki. Which means that, you know, drinking every weekend and smoking and you know, it's just normal. I didn't do anything different than others. <laughs> but when I was 20, I thought that this is not good for me. I have to change something, and I, did, I started to look something different. First, what I found was was hatha yoga. I thought that hatha yoga yoga sounds good. I didn't know anything about yoga, but yoga sounds good. It, it must be something positive. And but it was also mystic, so I, I was a little bit scared going to yoga class because it was it had this mystic background, Indian sages and this. So the levitation and some like you saw pictures. <clears throat> so I went to the class and after every class I were I I was looking myself and I was like, did something change? And was this positive or was this negative? Or am I am I scared about this? And so everything went well, but this hatha yoga was very light. It was for maybe built for the older people. It was more relaxation practice. So at the same time, I started to think about what is this Finnish history and what is this, what kind of techniques we have in Finland because it's also old culture and there must be something similar like yoga. Um, I started to make little research. I went to this place where they have all old books and I found okay they have they actually did some yoga in, in Finland hundreds of years ago they did some poses but they didn't call it yoga and the old healers also put people to the poses like the yoga teachers they were twisting people and they they were like pulling and pushing and said okay there was something similar so they were stretching people and giving adjustments also where somebody had some illness or some stiffness. So then I made more research and I was like, okay, wait, is, are they still existing, these people? I found that, yes, something like that was still available. So it was uh, at the same at the same time, like in the end of 80s, and I went to this place called Kaustin, and it's in the middle of Finland. And I met old healers. There's still a very strong healing culture in that area of Finland. I met these healers and and the first thing what I started to do, I, I met this person who did cupping. So they, they had this little axe and they made just little holes to the skin and then they had this horn. Nowadays it's a, it's a glass, this kind of, that we make the vacuum and then the blood starts to come out. But before they had this horn and they were sucking the blood from the, from the body. So I met this healer master who did this cupping. Um, but I also saw that there was other people, there was other healers also around who did something else. I was like, okay, I'm interested actually what these other people are doing all this in the other rooms. And I saw they were, they were called bone setters. So then I was like, this, this blood sucking is not, maybe not so interesting, but I'm, I'm very interested about this bone setting, that they are cracking the bones like chiropractors and setting the limbs and the nerves, and it was very amazing work to watch. So I went to, to sit to these rooms and look what they do. So one of these masters said, like, are you interested? I, I, I am, yes. He said, like, do you want to be my student? And I will, I will start this two years long workshop or course. That if you want to come, it like it will start in one month. And this this was uh, this was maybe eighty eight. So I went after one month, and I started to study this bone setting system. And I already did some yoga. 
and also so I went a few times and it was very interesting but these people because I was from the capital I was from Helsinki from the south they didn't like so much these people from the south they were from the middle of Finland they had their traditions and family you know lineages and like in yoga so they just they just taught me some physical techniques, how to do massage, how to do some bone setting, how to do some tracking and very f just physical techniques. Anyway, I decided to go because it was, it was a good knowledge and it felt it's something very old that it come from my own country. So after being there for some time and they started to say like, okay, maybe the Petri is Maybe Petri is a sensitive guy and he looks okay, you know, even he comes from Helsinki, he looks like he's fine. So they take, took me to this room and started to teach this different kind of healing, which was, which was this old energy healing system, what they had in Finland. So I became a student of bone setting and uh, energy healing. So my teacher, Raimo Holti, his name, he started to teach the energy healing with the bone setting and at the same time there was some herbal healing and uh, so I started to learn the old Finnish energy healing system. I was his student for about 10 years and I did this as my main job from 91 to 98. And what happened in 98 was that there was an article about Ashtanga Yoga in the, in the biggest Finnish newspaper. So it was, it was 18th of December, there was the article. And Ashtanga became so popular after that article that I had to stop this healing uh, work and become a full-time yoga teacher. And after this article, we had the next five years, every workshop, every, everything what we had always completely full. We had beginners workshops for, uh, like Ashtanga Yoga beginners workshops for next five years, we had twice a month. And every time there was more than 100 people for five years. <laughs> so there was thousands of people went through these beginners workshops and Ashtanga just became huge. And then it started to spread around Finland and you know, it started to go more to Sweden also and many other countries, but Ashtanga became popular. So I, I, I was also happy because healing work is very, is hard work. Energy healing is very hard mental work and bone setting is, is a hard physical work. So I was happy to start this Ashtanga Yoga lifestyle, complete lifestyle, because it was, it was yoga practice and it was healing at the same time. Because when I had the clients coming with some pain, they didn't want to do anything by themselves. So I, I, they said like, heal me. I give you money and you know, I, come, I come to this place like twice a week and you heal me. I'm like, I don't want to heal you. <laughs> you have to heal yourself also. So whatever you told to these people, okay, of course you do the healing, that's your work, but you also tell that, okay, can you do some stretching or can you eat something lighter or they didn't want to do anything. But now with the yoga, people came to practice. They maybe had some pain, but you could work with this as a therapist and and they really wanted to change their life. So it was, it was much better than uh, the healing what I was doing. So I was happy to do this, become a full-time yoga teacher. But that happened in 98. 